Okay, so the next data type that I want to talk about is the floating point number. So let me just clear the screen. So a floating point, flow, floating point number is a data type in MATLAB and in programming languages in general that represents decimal numbers. So, well, numbers including decimals in them. So pi, for instance, is a floating point number. Um, 3 is also a, d a floating point number, it's just 3.0000. Uh, any number that has a decimal in it is a floating point number. And again, MATLAB has a lot of functionality for uh, floating point numbers. So it turns out that floating point numbers are the most common type of number that we use. I mean, I think you can understand why. I mean, most of our calculations won't be whole numbers. The, the result won't give you a whole number. Uh, and so you need to represent numbers that can have decimals too. Unsigned and signed integers are nice, but they're nice for things like counting. One, two, three, four, five. You know, if you actually have to do divisions or square roots or something like that, inevitably you're going to end up with uh, a decimal, and then you must represent that data somehow. So a floating point number is the way that computers represent numbers with decimals in them. And it's quite interesting, uh, the IEEE standard for floating point numbers is represented in this way and I'll explain what it means it says if you go to if you go to this link again I'll put this up if you go to this link it'll explain that any floating point number any okay so any double floating point number requires 64 bits formatted as shown I'll explain what double means but essentially every every decimal uh, every number represented as a decimal can be represented by 64 bits in memory so that's the amount of memory that I must take up to represent one number and the number of bits is allocated in a very very special way so the first the first 52 uh, numbers the first 52 bits of that 64 bits represents the number actually the number represented as a decimal then the next 10 represent the exponent, so it's, uh, I'll explain that, it's, it's really just like a power raised to something. And then the last bit is assigned for the sign, is it a positive or a negative number? And so you get double, double precision floating point and single precision floating point. The difference is that double precision is twice the amount of precision. So I actually need twice the amount of bits. So if I look down here, it says any value stored as a single as a single floating point number only requires 32 bits so I've really just halved the amount of space that I can have to represent the number so the way that computers represent numbers is in scientific notation I could represent 1.23 as actually uh, 0 0.123 times 10, uh, 10 to the 1 you know oh sorry what am I doing uh, times 10 oh okay e, e to the 1 Okay, and so uh, this is this is how a computer represents any number. We might write out a number like one two three four five one point two three four five. The way that a computer represents it is in that IEEE standard. So it takes all of the all of the the numbers and it and it sort of converts it to a decimal and then it multiplies it by some kind of exponent raised to some power and then there's also a bit left over to say whether it's you know whether it's positive or negative and that's how all computers represent floating point numbers you might think it's a bit strange but actually it's a very good way to represent a very very large range of numbers uh, all with the same uh, footprint of memory so I can represent really really large numbers really really small numbers just with the scientific notation of 10 to the something or 2 to the something and then I, n I can reserve a lot more space just for the decimals. I can have a lot of decimal places uh, to represent that number. So, but again, these numbers don't go on forever. There's a, there's a finite range that floating point numbers can be represented in MATLAB and in computers in general. And so, again, it's important to understand that there's, there's a limit to what numbers you can represent with uh, a, a computer. So if I have if I have a uh, if I have a double precision floating point number 
then I can only represent numbers between 3.4 times 10 to the 38 or negative uh, 3.4 times 10 to the 38. Um, <coughs> if I try to do more than that, then I, I don't have enough bits to represent that number and the floating point number doesn't really mean anything. So again, this is a very big number. I mean, like 10 to the 38 is huge and negative 10 to the 38 is tiny. Um, but sometimes, you know, sometimes if you don't do something properly, you might end up overflowing. So you might go beyond that range and you'll run into problems. So uh, this is the default type in MATLAB. So obviously, I think it, it makes pretty good sense that a double precision floating point number would be the default data type for scientific computing. Everything that we do will eventually have some kind of decimal in it. And so it makes sense that all the data that we represent, uh, all, the, the, all the numeric data, all the data that with numbers in it, um, is represented as a double precision number. So what I mean by that is, like, let's say, let's say I've got y, and I just give it a number 3, or let's say 6. Then it looks like y is equal to 6, which to me is a whole number. It, when, it rep when it gets printed out like this, it looks like a whole number. But what I can do is I can check the type. So there's a function in MATLAB. Uh, th that's called whose, right? W H O S. If I push enter, then it will display all of the current variables loaded into memory. So it's very much displaying this workspace over here. And you'll notice that before, when we talked about integers, we created integers x, and they, it was an int 16 data type. Y, all I said was I created a variable y, and I gave it a number, a value 6. But what's done, what has happened is that MATLAB has converted that 6 to a double precision floating point number and then assigned that data type to Y. So if I click, if I, if I type in whose to see what types of data I have in memory, then it will give me Y, but it will say that Y is, a, is taking up 8 bytes and it's a double, point, uh, a double precision floating point number. So remember 8 I don't know if you know this, but eight, there are 8 bits in a byte, right? So 8, eight bits in one byte, right? So if I represent this, f this float, this double, with 8 bytes, then I'm actually taking up 64 bits, which is exactly what the IEEE standard is requiring me to represent a double floating point number. So, so that's something interesting about computers and data types. I think the, the main point that you need to realize is that uh, any number that I put in uh, into MATLAB is, by default, is a double, double precision floating point number. Um, and so we generally just work with double precision floating point numbers. Sometimes it's overkill. Actually, most times it's overkill. Um, but if everything is in the same data type, then things generally are just easier to work with. So if I type, let's say I type p is equal to pi, right? Pi, p is that, and then if I type whose, then p is also a double. So pi is also represented um, as a double precision floating point number. So again, this is just something for you to know. Uh, please keep it in mind. Um, we, d we will use other data types as well, but double Double precision floating point numbers are the most common and what we will always end up using.